Hi, I'm Mason, a GRE expert at Magoosh. I'm going to share with you some tips and techniques that helped me score a 6 on the AWA essays. But first, let me welcome you to Mason's Corner for Writers. In our last video, we covered all the steps you need to write an epic AWA argument essay. Today, the topic du jour is the AWA issue essay. I'm going to give you all of the major strategies and tips that you need to keep your cool and write like a boss. Step number one, get clear on what the issue essay is and how it's different from the argument essay. If you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out our video on the AWA argument essay. But let me get you the highlights. In the AWA argument essay, we're being asked to critically evaluate a short argument, identify the flaws, and then write an essay about them. The AWA issue essay works just a little bit differently. Instead of being given an argument, we actually have to create an argument responding to a particular issue. Here's how that works. You'll be given a statement that might read something like this one. Human societies should be moved into concentrated urban environments to allow large tracts of land to recover and rewild. This is what we call the issue. You can think about it as the issue on the table that's up for discussion. We at the Corner for Writers call it the special. Generally speaking, most issues on the issue essay have two primary positions. You can either agree with them or disagree with them. Now, that being said, these issues are complex and complicated and nuanced. They're like philosophical croissants, so to speak. ETS loves to select issues that we as a species have been debating since we first came up with languages and will likely be debating well into the future. Here's your first big takeaway about the issue essay. There is no correct answer to these issues. Rather, ETS wants to see you pick a side and make an argument defending yourself in that position. That brings me to step number two, which is to pay close attention to the prompt. Every issue essay comes with basically two different pieces. We have the issue itself and we have the prompt. The prompt is basically a set of instructions that you're given on how to craft your essay and it might look something like this. Write a response in which you discuss the extent to which you agree or disagree with the claim. In developing and supporting your position, be sure to address the most compelling reasons and or examples that could be used to challenge your position. Now, I know what you're thinking, that was the most boring two sentences I've ever read in my entire life. And you're right, the prompt is pretty boring, but it's also extremely important. The prompt is giving us really specific instructions to follow on our essay, and ETS is going to be grading us on that. So in this case, we not only have to discuss whether we agree or disagree with the claim, we also have to come up with things that could challenge our position. ETS has really stiff expectations when it comes to following directions, so we have to pay close attention to the prompt and come up with a game plan for incorporating that into our essay. Step number three is to set aside three to five minutes for brainstorming. All right, secret time. I have what I would describe as a ping pong brain. Every time I see one of these issues that ETS throws at me, my brain instantly starts playing ping pong against itself. Let's take a look at that issue that I came up with again. Human societies should be moved into concentrated urban environments to allow large tracts of land to recover and rewild. Okay, I can either agree or disagree with this statement, but how do I choose? Well, Mason, on the one hand, humans living in more concentrated areas might allow some species to reclaim habitat and possibly save some endangered ones. Hmm, good point, Mason. On the other hand, humans living in these areas would probably require vast amounts of water and energy. So where's that water and energy coming from? How much of it is being set aside and claimed for these urban projects? Mason, don't be so obtuse. The cities could just improve their water reclamation and recycling technology, and then they don't even have to bring in as much water. How about that? Problem solved. <laughs> Oh, but Mason, you're undervaluing the cultural importance of these rural environments to the people that have occupied them for, I don't know, centuries. Is it really fair to displace these people? Mason, knock it off. You just think you sound smarter because you're wearing glasses. You get the picture. This is why brainstorming for the first three to five minutes on the issue essay is such a crucial step to doing well. 
Brainstorming allows you to explore ideas, questions, or concerns that are relevant to the issue on the table. This should allow you to see the issue from multiple perspectives to get a better, more clear picture of the issue itself. Once three minutes are up and you've been keeping track of those ideas on your scratch paper, you should pause and start identifying which ones seem to support the position and which ones maybe do not support the position. Once you isolate, say, two or three reasons for or against the issue, well, then you're ready to start writing. Now, I wanna call out here that brainstorming on the issue essay is quite a bit different than brainstorming on the argument essay. So once again, check out that video for brainstorming advice on that exercise. Okay, where were we? Ah, step number four, meet your AWA best friend structure. Okay, so you just calm down your ping pong brain long enough to isolate two or three points in favor of this position, and you're ready to just unleash your fingers on those keys and let it rain. Not so fast. Before you start writing your essay, make sure you have a game plan in mind for how you're going to structure your thoughts. And actually, hold that thought, because I have a suggestion for you. As you draft your essay, I highly recommend that you follow what we call the five paragraph essay structure. Here's what it looks like. Paragraph one is your introduction. Paragraphs two, three, and possibly four are your body paragraphs. And paragraph five should be your conclusion. This structure is very popular in most academic writing and for good reason. It allows you to really structure your thoughts on the page, and this is gonna help your reader stay aboard your train of thought as you walk them through the major points. Let's break each of these elements down a little bit further, starting with the introduction. Step number five, write your introduction. You want to lead off in your introduction by introducing your reader to the issue up for debate. It is the introduction after all. So, keeping the example we used earlier, you might wanna lead off saying, there is a debate as to whether we should concentrate people into urban areas in order to let rural areas recover. Great, that would be a great first opening line. From there, you want to introduce a little bit more context that might be helpful for the reader as they understand your position. So, maybe you go on to say that this issue really calls into question the balance between sort of the health and sustainability of the ecosystem versus the health and happiness of human societies. You're just giving them a little bit more background so they can appreciate your position. The last part of your introduction paragraph is also the most important. This is your thesis statement. And your thesis statement is literally the cornerstone of your entire essay, so you wanna make sure you give that special attention. Well, what is a thesis statement? Your thesis statement should do two things. First, it should state very clearly whether you agree or disagree with the position given in the issue. And next, it should give a few reasons why you think that. Here's what it might look like. I disagree with this statement due to the implausibility of a sustainably constructed urban environment, as well as the moral infringements caused by the displacement of people from the rural homes. Like I said, I want my thesis statement to do two things really well. I definitely, definitely, definitely want to make it clear which side of the debate that I'm on. And second, I want to give my reader some indication as to what major points I'm going to be making in the rest of my essay. I want to remind you once again that ETS is not fishing for a correct answer on these essays. You can agree or disagree with the statement. What's important is that you back it up with a thesis statement and some major points and examples that support it. If you do all of those things well, you'll be laughing like a pelican. Is that a thing people say? Whatever. Step number six, write your body paragraphs. Here's a really important thing you have to know about body paragraphs. They should only be focusing on one point at a time. I can't tell you how many essays I've read where students just try to cram way too much into each body paragraph and it just leaves the reader kind of distracted and disoriented. So rather than do that, commit to addressing and fully exploring one point per body paragraph and that means having an example and providing some explanation and analysis that shows how this connects to your thesis statement. Your body paragraphs should flow something like this. One, write your topic sentence, which introduces the main point. Two, provide an example that demonstrates your main point. And three, use the rest of your body paragraph, three to five sentences, to explain and analyze why this example supports your thesis statement. Remember, everything in your essay should be in support of your thesis statement. 
These statements are very vain types of statements. They simply expect 100% of your attention all the time. They don't think that's too much to ask, so don't even try it. This is why spending some extra time on your thesis statement is so vital because it's giving you a roadmap for your body paragraphs. So all the way back in brainstorming, you should be looking at the two or three points you've come up with that you want to write about and asking, could I develop each one into a nice paragraph? And could I come up with a really good, strong, specific example that demonstrates it? But that's for another video. This all sounds so easy, right? Actually, it's not. Developing your thoughts into clear, concise, persuasive body paragraphs is not an easy skill to master. So you have to be practicing your writing constantly to improve there. That being said, knowing what the issue essay is, knowing how to brainstorm, and having a structure in mind for your essay and for your body paragraphs is going to help you make big gains all by itself. It's kind of like having a blueprint for a house. Once you have the blueprint in place, you know what that house is going to look like, you can focus more on just putting it together. And the same is true for your essay. Once you have a game plan in place, you can focus more on those other skills like spelling, grammar, and sentence construction, which are all crucial to having a well-written and clear essay. Step number seven, write your concession paragraph. Wait, what? What's a concession paragraph? There's nothing like that on the argument essay. You're right, there's nothing like that on the argument essay. The concession paragraph is pretty unique to the issue exercise and it's worth diving into in some detail. Earlier, I was explaining that the issues that ETS selects for this exercise are like philosophical croissants, and I stand by that analogy. They're layered, they're complicated, they're delicate and nuanced. So while ETS definitely wants to see us take a side in this debate, they also want to see that we appreciate the fact that they've chosen issues that are simply complicated, and the concession paragraph is really your moment to do that. There are two primary ways to approach your concession paragraph. The first is to identify some kind of limited exception to what you're suggesting. So sticking with our example, maybe I agree that in most cases we should move people from rural environments into urban environments. However, maybe there are some exceptions there as well. Maybe there are some cases where we say, okay, there's a special circumstance here. We should not relocate these people for good reason. So my concession paragraph can be devoted to that just identifying that exception and explaining it. The second primary approach to the concession paragraph is to anticipate a counter argument and then respond to it. So you might be saying, this is a legitimate objection to what I've said so far that might be raised by the opposition. You're gonna say, I hear you, that's valid. However, at the end of the day, I still think my position is the better one and here's why. So you wanna be fair to the issue, fair to the other side, saying this is complicated, there's some good points on both sides, but you wanna stay firm in your position at the end of the day. If you pull this off, that tricky balance between being firm but fair, ETS will adore you for it. It's gonna send your score through the roof. All of that takes some practice as well, so stay tuned for a future video all about concession paragraphs. Step number eight, if you have time, write a short conclusion. Keep in mind, you only have 30 minutes for this essay. So if you eat up three to five minutes for just reading the prompt and brainstorming, that only leaves you 25 minutes to write and to edit your introduction and your body paragraphs. So if you get through all of that, where you have your introduction, you have your two supporting body paragraphs, you have your concession paragraph done, then tag on a short conclusion. But if you have to make a game day decision as to which paragraph should go, if you just don't have time, cut the conclusion. It's the least important part of your essay. So if you do have time for that conclusion, keep it short and sweet. Basically recap the major points that you've made, remind your reader of what your thesis was, and maybe if you're feeling up for it and you have time, give some suggestions for next steps. Maybe make some recommendations on what studies should be conducted if we're going to inform this debate further or what next steps the opposition would have to take to disprove your position. Again, none of that is necessary. It's only if you have time. Again, you should really pour most of your energy into those body paragraphs and your concession paragraph and making sure that your thesis is in tip top shape. Step number nine, read, 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 write, write, write. In a way, step number nine should really be step number one. Understanding the issue essay, knowing how to brainstorm, having a structure in place, these are all super important for making big gains on your score. However, 
At the end of the day, there's still a lot to be said about just being able to write clearly and concisely on these essays, which is important and crucial for getting an above average score. So you have to be practicing your writing skills because those take time to develop even for native speakers and especially for non-native speakers. The simplest way to improve your writing is just by reading more. The best writers I know are also dedicated and voracious readers. By reading, you develop your ear better for grammar, for spelling, for sentence construction, and all of that is going to trickle into your writing as well. So you have to be setting aside time in your study schedule for reading, whether that's news articles, books, academic journals, etc. Anything will be better than nothing, but the more analytical content you can get your hands on, the better you're going to get at the AWA. The good news is we at Magoosh have already put together a fantastic resource for you on our blog that contains a bunch of links to great reading materials to help you develop your ear for grammar and spelling and also help you comprehend journals and materials written in an academic style, which is also hugely helpful on the verbal sections. So check that blog post out after this video. Remember that we here at Magoosh are here to help you keep cool, improve your writing, and to nab that dream score on the AWA. So subscribe to this channel, drop a comment below, and keep your eyes open for another invite to Mason's Corner for Writers.